Hello everyone, I'm Zephyr and this video is episode 6 of my beginner tutorial series to After Effects. In this video we're going to be exploring the world of cameras, 3D, and motion blur and stuff like that. So let's get started, but first of all you'll need this project that we've made over the past few episodes. It started on episode 3 and you can look in the description for links to that, but it should look something like this. It's not totally essential to have the exact thing down. I guess you could follow the tutorial if you had something similar to this, but you kind of need the basic idea so that you can follow along and learn a little bit more. So let's start off with creating a new camera. Layer new camera. Now a camera acts just as you wouldn't expect a camera to act. It's an, another lens for you to be able to see the world through so we're gonna just leave these options alone you can have all types of stuff but I've never really played with those because you really don't need to so we're gonna click OK and it gives you a warning that camera and lights do not affect 2D layers what this means is that if you were to move the camera to another angle anything that is 2D will not basically look any different with your camera moving. So you can click never again or once per session if you really need to be reminded but for me never again is fine so basically we have this camera and nothing has changed however this is the 3D option for each layer if you can't see that you might have to right click here and go to columns and I believe it switches yes you have to go to right click on this bar columns switches and you should see this now so what you're gonna do is click the 3d for all three of these and it just shows that and nothing will change yet because we haven't moved around the camera so what we're gonna do is move around the camera so click on this little arrow go to transform and let's say rotation okay and that's lame let's do this rotation no that's lame too okay so let's just do this rotation so what we've done is rotated the camera in much the same way you would in real life and so everything looks different because it's oriented differently let's go back here and press zero now if we were to move go to camera options no not camera options position let's move it around and this is the Z position which is basically how far you are away from whatever te text or objects if we bring this up we're getting closer to the text note the text isn't getting bigger we're just getting closer so that's the way the Z works this is just uh, right and left and if you notice as we pull this the camera is getting a little more distant and this text is kind of turning to the right or left so we can see that the position is probably shifting towards the right of the text here this moves it that way okay so remember we're not actually moving the text what we're doing is changing the view of the camera so now we can see that we see the same composition and everything happened the same way except from another angle now of course this text isn't truly 3d so it's not uh, you don't see more of it right here and it's very flat but that's kind of the idea of 3d so let's do control Z until we get all the way back to normal because I want to know what values we had let's see I'm not sure all the way to normal is okay I believe it was right there so we have these values for the camera and I want to do a little animation where we kind of zoom into the text from another spot so let us go to the start of the composition and click the keyframe the little stopwatch for a keyframe and let's move forward 
actually let's go back here and uh, let's actually we need to be able to see the text to do this okay let's come in from the side how about okay so it goes like this but we want to reverse that I was just trying to find out the value so 640 remember that number and right here it's 2960 so we're gonna copy this value over here paste it and now we're gonna move over here and choose 640 okay so now the way it works is the cameras coming in while the animation is happening so it's kind of a cool effect it gives a 3d feel to that layer so that's the way a camera works and um, there's some other stuff point of interest I believe is how the camera is facing what it's looking at uh, kind of if you were to uh, turn your camera in real life but that's pretty much it in that sense the camera options are just a bunch of stuff here that you can deal with by yourself I've never really touched those because I didn't feel a need to but remember the 3d objects this clicking this is essential for your camera to work if we were to um, undo what I just did so that we're still animated let's uncheck this you'll see that now our camera doesn't make it looks like it's moved somewhere else okay um, so that's because of the fact that they're not 3d but if we turn them back to 3d and we move it we see that the camera does affect it so you need to make sure you have the, these 3d ones selected why you wouldn't want something 3d is maybe if you have a background um, and you don't want the background to move then then you don't want to check that 3d box so anyways let's move on to the next thing which is very simple this other switch right here the its motion blur if you're to select these you can just click and drag and select them all at the same time it basically looks at the motion of your text and blurs it a little bit now for this example it's not the movement isn't enough to really see it but the more your text moves the more it will be a little bit blurry with this effect and it looks good because it makes it look more smooth it's more professional but it does take a little bit more time well actually quite a bit more time to render so for a simple thing like this it's fine because it doesn't take long to render but for a really large project you have to weigh what you're going to be getting in terms of render render time for the benefits of a motion blur so just clicking this will work actually I might have forgotten something yes I'm stupid you have to click on this in order to have the motion blur actually work okay so now you can kind of see let's just do a RAM preview here press 0 or this arrow over here let's just see how it looks when it's previewed out okay if you if you kind of watch carefully you can see that it's kind of blurry when it comes in okay let's try removing the switches and doing the same thing it's it's a little bit different okay for this is not as noticeable as I've talked about but just keep in mind that it looks good for other projects so that's about it for this video I just wanted to show you the 3d layers motion blur and working with cameras now in the future actually right here this is perfect you can see the motion blur effect because it's blurred in the direction that the motion is taking it so there's there's a good example there we go all right so I hope that helps you guys the next episode I'll talk about some other cool things I'll probably show you a, a really cool background with um, with a gradient and some other stuff so if you enjoyed this episode please like it it really helps me out and subscribe in order to see the rest of my videos all right guys have a nice day